Welcome to Get Better Basketball Live. I'm Coach DeMarco, and today my guest is Wilmington College assistant basketball coach Cassie Listivka. Coach Listivka is going to take us through her shooting progression that she uses with her team. You're not going to want to miss this episode. But before we jump into it, make sure you hit that like button down below, turn on your notifications, and subscribe to my YouTube channel for more great video breakdowns each and every week. Another Get Better Basketball Live is up now. Coach, thanks for joining me today. Coach, thank you for having me. Um, I'm excited here because we're going to talk shooting, which is something that, you know, I think every coach loves to learn about. It's something I love to do as a player and as a coach. Um, so, you know, just really, really basic, um, you know, what is it when you guys are working on shooting and practice, what does that look like for you at Wilmington College? So something that we're actually going to change this year come practice is we're going to start practices. We'll have our warm-up kind of stations um, for 20 minutes. Our assist other assistant coach will take half at one end. I'll take half at one end. And we're really honing in, um, especially with us implementing a new offense. We're going to basically do shooting and shots within our reading. Um, kind of get them used to the movement and the new cutting and everything. That way, come practice time, it's kind of natural for them, and we don't have to spend so much time breaking it down. Uh, we'll also start with more kind of a competitive shooting, uh, kind of full court, get their heart rate up a little bit, put a, a goal on there, and then also kind of like a consequence if we don't meet our goal. So a little bit pressure within that as well. And that's what I like when I do individual training too, is add a little bit conditioning with some pressure into it. Um, but Shooting for us is basically we're trying to get as many natural movement shots for our girls as possible. So they, it's natural for them in the game. They're not surprised by it. it ha, it's not something that they're not used to or they haven't done. So even if it's just basic spot catch and shoot for time and we've got two groups going, at least they're getting shots with the spots that they might get during an offensive read. So what does that look like for you guys? I, I like what I'm hearing here, kind of, you know, uh, incorporating some of the movements that players are going to be using. So what does that look like for, for you? What, what are some examples of some of the movements that, that you would be doing with your players? And, um, you know, how do you build that into drills for them in, in practice? So this is basically kind of our lift movement that we did in dribble drive last year. Now, like I said, it's going to be a little bit different this year because we're implementing some new concepts, especially Princeton. But where I'm standing at is kind of how far we want to get their J cut. So again, movement of them getting downhill on their lift read and being able to catch right into their shot. This also allowed them to kind of go full speed. So if they didn't have their shot, they're already coming downhill for an attack motion. So we did this towards the end of practice. Again, you see the clock is at 640. So they would do this for about four or five minutes, depending on what we put on there. And then we'll go to our pitch pass in the middle from our slot to slot, working on those threes. And then we would transition to the other side of working on our lift threes there. So this is just some basic movement of shots within our dribble drive offense we did last year of them getting kind of that full speed motion. Coach, I, I love this because, you know, even if you're not a team that runs dribble drive, like I know you said, you're going to be using some different offensive concepts this year. But, you know, you can think about what your players do, what types of shots you want your players to get and really kind of build your shooting drills around that. And it seems like that's what you've done here. I mean, your players are getting a ton of reps. They're working on their, um, you know, their lift passes. They're working on their footwork, catching and shooting here. Uh, if someone comes underneath uh, off of this kind of pitch back, so to speak. So there's a lot of different um, things that are being incorporated in, in, into a pretty simple shooting drill. Yeah, and I think that's the biggest key, especially as coaches, is you want to simplify it, but you also don't, you want to, like you said, you want to add a, a variety of concepts. So the passing, the footwork, because there's so much that goes into shooting and it's a lot of it is mechanics. And I'm a big believer that great shots come from great passes. So if we're not working on our lift passes, it's not going to matter in a game. So like you said, they have to attack hard to the drop zone and they got to really focus on being in a low balance position because usually sometimes this assistant coach will push them a little bit and kind of be a physical. If they're off balance and they're just casually going through the motion, it's going to be, it's going to be a, bad, a bad pass to the shooter and it's going to be ending up probably not going to go into the hoop. So, you know, they're also focusing on those little details as well. 
Coach, I love I love that drill and drills like that because you're putting players in spots where they're getting game shots. And um, I guess two questions here. One, I'm thinking about you know shooting in practice, but wanted to ask something else as I'm I'm thinking through here, and and that's you know a drill like that. You know, you're getting a bunch of shots on air, rapid fire, and I and I love it. Are there ways that you incorporate or advance a drill like that or that you would suggest coaches might say like, yep, we do this, this lift drill, dribble drive, and this is like the first tier of what we're doing. And then we, you know, make this progression. And is is there a progression that you kind of work through with a drill like that? Or is that something that's just an everyday drill for you and you, you incorporate it for five or so minutes of practice? So last year, that was kind of an everyday drill for us. Now, we would actually progress it a little bit in our warm-up stations we had in the beginning um, to where we would make different reads. Like, I would be a defender. So now they have to make the read of, are they attacking a bad closeout, or am I playing off in a pack line to where they have to catch and be ready to shoot three? So we would kind of progress that a little bit, adding a a dummy kind of defender to where now they have to make a specific read. It's not always going to be a wide-open lift three. We would also progress that into it once they make their lift and they are attacking downhill and they get stopped at the nail, making that pitch pass to our person that's coming back around. And now they are attacking either downhill or again into a pull up or a shot. So we would incorporate, like you said, a progression. We would start with the basic just lift shot and then we would add a little bit more movement in our dribble drive offense. And that would be either we start that in the beginning of practice with our warm up stations, depending on what our emphasis was, or we would do a finishing type shooting. We always ended practice with some type of competitive or shooting type drill that had a goal that they could attain. Mm-hmm. Because our belief was we wanted our kids to walk away from practice like kind of confident and satisfied. So we don't give them something that they can't attain. Like we might we might push them a little bit and make it like a, a good, decent like goal number but we know that it's attainable. Like we said, we don't want to end it on a negative note. Well, I love that progression coach. And I think it gives other coaches something to think about. You know, you can take kind of the basic premise of what you do with your offense. And then I like how you added in the reads, um, you know, kind of the dummy defense, as you said, where they're either going to pull up or they might attack the basket, depending on the closeout and the read that they get. So incorporating decision-making into that, that drill as well. Um, so, so kind of thinking about shooting now in practice, kind of the second part here is, you know, how much time do you allot in a given practice to shooting? You know, are there different segments that you do throughout practice? Is there one shooting period? What does that look like for you guys at Wilmington? Yeah, so this year will be a little bit different. Like you said, we kind of start our practice plan and we're kind of collaborating right now this week of where we're going to input certain certain drills and everything so like I said we'll do our warm-up stations agility and everything and then we will actually start with a full court like conditioning shooting to get their heart rate up put some pressure on them again get some movement but also get a lot of shots in you know right now for this first week we're going to kind of focus on some defense in the beginning but then towards the middle we actually do have um about 10-15 minutes of where we're going to shoot within our offense of our different three cut reads so again, they're getting, and we can, we have enough players where we can split half and half. Um, so a lot of people are getting reps up. And then we, like I said, we'll end practice with about, it sometimes can be about five to eight minutes with a shooting drill that's competitive, but also has an end goal. So again, it puts some pressure on them, but it's an also an attainable goal. Sometimes we make it fun too. Some of the kids know some of the shooting drills that we do and they, they want, they like that pressure. And we have some of our previous goals from last year and numbers that were like, we can beat this. Um, so it, it adds a little bit of fun to it. But like I said, we'll, we try to do some conditioning shooting in the beginning to kind of get them going and focused, especially when you start getting tired, we need, we need their minds here. Um, we'll put some shooting reads in the, in the middle of it, and then we'll end practice with a shooting drill. That sounds awesome, coach. And, uh, you know, like, like all coaches out there, I, uh, like to steal things from other coaches and, you know, use them. I think the best coaches out there are able to take a number of different ideas. And one of the things I noticed uh, on your Twitter uh, is that you posted just this, it's like a minute scroll of all these competitive shooting drills. And you just mentioned 
um, you know, that you guys use maybe some competitive shooting in practice. So there's probably a slew of drills that you could pick that you really like. But if you had to pick one or you would share one with coaches out there, is there a competitive shooting drill that you really like to use with your players in practice um, and you think it really benefits them? Yeah, so one of them is, is towards the end. And I don't know if you'll be able to see. Yeah, you can probably see that pretty well. And we call it our transition threes. And so we'll have two ends. So we'll have like shooters on the wing, one rebounder here, one rebounder here, shooters, shooters, like that kind of setup. And then what will happen, they'll shoot, get the, this person will get the rebound, pass it out. When she passes it, she's coming down to this line to shoot. The shooter is now the rebounder and it's just crisscross. So they, they're constantly running back and forth. And we, we do two sides. And you can make that competitive where you're going side versus side, or we do it basically, they go for two minutes and then we go corners. And they don't have, depending on their conditioning level, um, we, we have we gave them like a minute halftime break before we went to corners when their conditioning level was pretty good we didn't give them a halftime break we just went right to corners so we went four minutes straight so after the two minute mark they they had to mentally switch to their corners um like i said we we went, we were we were a fast-paced team so we really wanted to push tempo so anything that basically made us run full court and kind of be ready to catch and shoot benefited us in our favor well, Coach, I so appreciate what you have shared with us tonight. Um, so many great coaching points. And, and you know, I'm going to go back and watch this a couple of times and take some notes, which I like to do when I talk to coaches. I'm like, really love what they had to say about that. And it gives me a chance to go back and, and to reflect. And if coaches want to reach out to you, if they have questions about anything that you talked about um, tonight, uh, is there a way that they can connect with you either on social media or email or um, whatever, whatever other way? Yeah. So my email can be found on our website, but my uh, Wilmington email is C uh, is Cassie underscore Lestifka um, at Wilmington.edu. Uh, my social media handle is at uh, underscore coach Cass. Um, if they want to reach me by phone, I'm happy to give my cell phone number out to this, shoot me an email and I'll be happy to uh, email or send my cell phone or even DM me on Twitter and I'll send my cell phone out because I'm big on texting too because with recruiting and everything, I'm already on my phone as much. So I'm, I'm okay with a simple phone call or a text as well. Well, that's awesome, coach. I know some uh, coaches are going to be taking advantage and uh, you know, reaching out to you. And I feel fortunate I had a chance to, uh, we've done this once before and feel fortunate I had a chance to talk hoops with you once again and uh, hopefully in the future. Um, but best of luck with your upcoming season. Um, it sounds like you have some good pieces in place and um, hope you guys have a great year. Well, thank you, coach. I appreciate it. And I always love hopping on and, and talking hoops with you too. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you.